Homosexuality from the Bible point of view. The topic of homosexuality in the Bible is a complex and often contentious one. And interpretations can vary widely among different religious denominations and scholars. But IT is a simply straightforward according to the Bible. People may have their own opinions about homosexuality does not mean. The Bible is not clear about IT says about engaging in a natural acts. Very fascinating that when a parent's child professed to be a homosexual, bisexual, lesbian, pansexual, or many sexual gratifications that we have in these days, they turn to be an advocate for their child even though they are Christian and knowing that IT is a sin. They now find a way to interpret the scriptures to run along with their new experience with their child. Leviticus 18 22 and 20 13. These passages are often cited in discussions of homosexuality in the Bible. Leviticus 18 22 states, You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Leviticus 20 13 similarly declares, If a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. Some interpret these verses as clear prohibitions against homosexual behavior, while others argue that they are specific to the context of ancient Israel and its ceremonial laws. Romans 1 26-27, in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans, contains a passage often cited in discussions of homosexuality. Romans 1 26-27 states, For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. For their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women, and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. Some Christians interpret this passage as a condemnation of homosexual behavior. While others argue that it's important to consider the historical and cultural context of Paul's writing. 1 Corinthians 6 to 9 to 10 and 1 Timothy 1:10. These New Testament passages list various sins and vices, including forms of sexual immorality. The lists include Greek terms like malakoi and arsenoitai, which some interpreters believe refer to homosexual acts. However, there is debate over the precise meaning of these terms, and some argue that they may refer to other forms of sexual misconduct or exploitation. Progressive and inclusive interpretations, many progressive and inclusive Christian denominations and scholars argue that the Bible's passages on homosexuality should be understood in their historical and cultural context, and that they should not be used to condemn loving, committed same-sex relationships. They point to the broader themes of love, compassion, and inclusion found in the Bible, and argue for a more inclusive interpretation of its teachings. It's important to recognize that interpretations of the Bible can be highly personal and are influenced by a person's religious tradition, beliefs, and cultural context. The question of whether homosexuality is considered a sin in the sight of God from a biblical point of view is a topic of significant debate and interpretation within different religious traditions. Views on this issue can vary widely among individuals and religious denominations. Traditional Interpretations, Many Conservative Interpretations of the Bible Particularly in the Old Testament, view homosexual activity as a sin. Leviticus 18.22 and Leviticus 20.13 are often cited as verses that prohibit homosexual acts. Additionally, some New Testament passages, such as Romans 1.26-27 and 1. Corinthians 6-9-10, are also referenced as condemning same-sex relations. Progressive interpretations, some individuals and religious groups take a more progressive or inclusive approach to interpreting the Bible, arguing that the cultural and historical context of these verses should be considered. They believe that these passages may not necessarily apply to loving, consensual same-sex relationships as we understand them today. Context matters, interpreting biblical passages requires considering the cultural, historical, and linguistic context in which they were written. Biblical scholarship often explores the nuances of these texts to understand their intended meaning. Diverse religious views, different religious denominations, and traditions have var instances on this issue. 
Some denominations and churches fully embrace LGBTQ plus individuals and same-sex marriage, while others maintain more conservative views. Personal beliefs, people's personal beliefs about homosexuality and the Bible can also vary widely, even among members of the same religious tradition. Some individuals may reconcile their faith with a more inclusive view of LGBTQ relationships, while others may hold more conservative beliefs. IT does not mean what the Bible is saying is wrong. Homosexuality has been condemned in the Bible in so many occasions. Men normally keep interpret the Bible to suit their evil desires. Normally people choose to do whatever they please based on their own lust and flesh. But the Bible clearly states that IT is an abomination and anyone whosoever engages in the act should be put dead according to Leviticus 18.22. In a nutshell LGBTQ plus use love to justify their behavior when IT comes to homosexuality. But love has nothing to do with homosexual. If you love someone does not means you should marry or sleep with. God loves mankind that's why he sent his only begotten son Jesus Christ to die for our sins. He loves you as does not mean he has to have sex with the pet because you love your pet. Then come another sin bestiality, which is also known as zoophilia typically involves recurrent intense sexual fantasies, urges, and sexual activities with non-human-like animals. LGBTQ plus sometimes confuse love with homosexuality. If you love your cat, dog, bunny, fowl, bird, or any pet in general, you don't marry them or sleep with them. That's why there is a big difference between animals and human beings. Do not mistake love with homosexuality. In the nutshell, what is considered a sin by some may not be viewed as such by other traditions. Additionally, individuals may choose to engage in personal reflection and study to form their own understanding of these matters in light of their faith. But according to the Bible's point of view, IT is an abomination in the sight of God Leviticus 18:22 and 2013. May God open our eyes to understand the deepest understanding of homosexuality. Our salvation is more important than our sexual gratifications.